Hey everybody and welcome back. In this tutorial we're going to go through asynchronous execution and we're going to have a look at await and async. Now before we get started I just want to have a or do a quick overview of, of exactly what we're trying to achieve. So say we want to get some data from a remote server, for example some cat data. We can either do so synchronously or asynchronously. Now if we do something synchronously what that means is that we make the request and we have to wait for that request to complete before we're able to complete any other requests. However, if we do something asynchronously, the app will basically fetch the data in the background, so that's this request here, and it will allow us to continue to fetch or complete other tasks within our program while that async request is taking place. And once it completes, it basically calls back to the function and finishes off whatever it needed to do. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go through basically a short example. So we're going to open up dartpad.dartlang.org and we're going to get started. Now we're going to basically, at the very top here, we're going to import dart HTML. And this allows us to do some, um, some sort of some, some HTML requests uh, within Dartpad that we wouldn't normally be able to do, um, that we could normally do in Dart itself, but because we're doing it through Dartpad, we're going to need to use the Dart HTML um, library. Then within our main function, we're going to delete our print, and we're going to have a var result is equal to HTTP request dot get string, and then we need to supply the URL. We're going to use rebounds.online, which is a service that Rico set up in order for us to test and get some data from an API. So we'll do HTTPS rebounds.online forward slash API forward slash time. And this will basically return the time that's on the server that rebounds is hosted on. And then we're simply going to print the result. We'll give it a second. And then if we hover over to the console tab, we'll notice that instance of future is actually what was printed. And that's actually because that when we performed the async request, it returned a future object. So you can think of a future object as um, at some point, this object will contain the correct result. Right now, we're only printing out what the actual type of the variable is. So we need to make a few adjustments to the code in order to handle the handle the successful response and an error response from this request. So in order to do that, we're going to create two new functions. We're going to make a void handle success pass to string response. Oops. And we're going to print request was successful. And then print the response. And then we'll have a void handle error, which takes a error and prints the request was not successful. And then we'll print the error. Now, within our main function, we're going to leave our HTTP request, but instead of having the print line straight away, what we're going to do is we're going to have a result dot then. So basically the, uh, um, the request or the result, the request's result uh, has a few kind of functions we can call after. So this is within the future class uh, and one of them is then. So basically when it gets called, what do we do? When we call uh, when we call then on the result, so straight after we've called the result, we are actually going to pass it a function that it needs to call afterwards. So we're going to get it to call handle success. And then we also want to catch an error. So um, a HTTP request has another, uh, another function called result.catchError. And we're going to pass it a function that we want to handle the error with. So we're going to do handle error. So basically the result, we call the then function on the result and pass it the success handler. However, if we get an error, 
we're going to handle it with the function handle error. This is just breaking the logic up into uh, methods or functions that we can we can use to kind of explain this a little bit better. And then within our print statement, we're going to put in main function has ended, and you'll see why in just one second. So now if we run this, you see something kind of interesting, and that's that the result is obviously triggered, but we actually get the print statement for the main function has ended before the, res the request was successful. And that goes to show that there is a there is an asynchronous request occurring here um, because the function is allowed to continue and this print statement occurs before this request is finished. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And it's a, it's a visually, visual way of showing you how the program is able to continue to progress um, while the request is going on. But we can actually make this code a little bit easier to deal with. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to pretty much get rid of these uh, error handlers, but we're going to move logic down here instead. So after the request, or after the result is called, we're going to do on the next line, and to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to drop both of these ones to the next line. We'll do the get string, and then we'll do a then. So we can actually put the then statement on the end of this re request. So then string response. And within the string response, we're just going to print uh, the request was successful. So we're basically just mod moving this logic down. Just make sure this is on the right line. And we can now get rid of this. And then we need to catch error. Ah, my bad. We actually, because this is calling a function, we need to have another wrapper around it. And then we have there. Sorry, it's getting a little bit messy. You'll, if you don't want to type this code out, that's fine because we're going to be making a big, a lot of changes. So maybe it's better if you just watch. So we're going to have our dynamic error in the catch error call. And we've got too many braces there. And within this dynamic error, we're basically going to take the logic from up here and put it here. We can remove that now. And we'll leave this last part for now. We can also get rid of the assigning it to a variable because we no longer need that. And we'll run the function again. And we'll get the same sort of result. Main function has ended and the request is still proceeding. But we can still simplify this a lot more. And while it is, it's still quite compact, the overall code is a little bit messy looking. And luckily, Dart actually provides a syn syntactic sugar <laughs> to make this uh, asynchronous code a lot easier to read. And those are async and the await keywords. So let's actually re-implement this, but using that instead. So what we'll do is at the top here, we're going to import Dart async making use of the async libraries. And we'll basically get rid of most of this code, putting the request back. Yep. And we'll have our print main function has ended. Okay, cool. Now we're still not making use of this function yet, but we will do that now. So what we'll do is we'll change this main function to instead be a future or to return a future object. So now when main is called initially, it's going to return a future and that future will um, will be handled uh, when the time comes. So basically if you call it async on a future, um, you will it'll it'll it will wait for the the function to complete uh, and then push the result out. So we'll close that off. Uh, and the last thing we need to do is to basically call, so base up here, just before this request, we're going to have a final response is equal to, then we're going to call await on here. And we also need to make sure this is async, sorry. So it's returning a future object of an async. So this is an async function. We call an await on this particular 
URL again. Then we're going to have a print request was successful. Print response. And I believe that might be everything we need. Have a look. And there we go. And that's pretty much it. So the variable holds the time retrieved from the web service, um, and then it uh, responds. Yep. So we actually do want to add one more thing to this. Sorry, uh, we want to add some error handling, basically. So around all of this, we want to have a try catch. Uh, so we'll make use of the learnings we made before. So we're going to put the logic for making the request into this block here. Let's we'll put that up onto the line. Then we will catch an error. And within this block, we're just going to have a print request was not successful. And then we'll print the error out. And then print the uh, main function has ended. And that more or less summarizes uh, how an async and await, await functions work and how we can make requests uh, using the future return object. Um, a few things to note is that this main function has ended. That's now appearing at the end because this function is async and this is still occurring within this function. Um, so it's important to understand that while the main function uh, is still executed asynchronously, uh, is actually still still executed asynchronously within the context of the program. Um, the fact that this is printing here uh, is merely sort of just a uh, an outcome of how we've how we've structured our main function. So if we had another function that was calling this main function, and then after the call to this main function we had this, it would still print. But because we've got it within this function, it's going to print after this await has been fulfilled. I know it's a little bit complicated. Um, await and async is something that takes a lot of time to kind of fully understand and grasp. Um, hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how it works um, so that when we move on to something a little bit more, not more complicated in Flutter, but we sort of brush over it and I wanna make sure you guys have at least some understanding of why we do use a future, why we do use async and why we do use await statements. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next video.